mischief and poverty cause you to roam. Last time Nancy and I did this concert, it was one year to the day, or the week anyway, that Alistair had sadly left us all a little earlier than we'd all hoped, and I'm sure he did too. And uh, we barely remember the concert in some ways because uh, we just, um, two weeks before Alistair was, was, was uh, taken away from us, um, we had our first child, Hamish, who is now called Hamish Alistair. And uh, yeah, we Hamish's first trip out of the we, knew, we lived on a boat at the time. It's a long story. <laughs> Having a child could pay to that, to me. But uh, Hamish's first trip out of the, ha the house was to come up to Ali's funeral. And a year later, we came to this, this room and did the first memorial concert. And uh, you'll have heard Hamish, if you were here that night. <laughs> Everyone heard Hamish that night. He's quite an enthusiastic tenor, isn't he? Put he it that screamed way. the place down. Yes. Place down. So it's nice to be back in karma circles. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, I love the way that Alistair wrote about his hometown and I always think of him when I come here, it's always a, a massive pleasure to, to remember him. And uh, so this is a song about my hometown, uh, where I live now, um, but it could be about any, any town, especially north, northish. And um, it's called Never Ever Lay Them Down. This is the first song on my album Sweet Visitor, which has James Fagan all over it, very decoratively as well. But it is sort of my solo album and I wrote all the songs on it. This is a song about love and austerity and living in a, um, a, a, a poor bit of town, um, but knowing how much love there is there. It's called Never Ever Lay Them Down. <coughs> Cast down in stony garden, sweet visitor, we heard you say, There grows no grass and none shall pass till some great day of judgment. Oh, are we bound for glory, born on a little fortune's way? Or are we bound for some dark town and some great northern story? And it's cold, cold, the winter's hard, you shall not think of stalling. She's proud. 
is um, a traditional song, and it's one of those great songs um, from, it's kind of found in different versions all over the place. Um, we learn a mixture of an English and an Irish version. Um, in England, and I think Scotland too, this um, song is called Allentine of Harrow. And in Ireland, it's called Valentine O'Hara, which I think is a gorgeous sort of whispers kind of version of how things get changed and mutated. So and it's a great song. It's, a, it's about a rebel, a revolutionary, well, a highwayman. That's how I like to read it, though. He's a highwayman. And, um, but he's one of these characters in song who does more in his first verse than other people do in whole you know, novels. He's wonderful. He's a deserter from the army, and then he takes to the highway, because what else is he going to do? Um, Alistair was one person who really used to set traditional music for us in a kind of uh, social context, which we knew, we knew that, that it had that function and that it had that, the stories of ordinary people, but he really kind of fired the sense of rebellion for us um, in the, that we thought and we think is there in traditional songs. This is a great one. Rebellion, dressed in velvet, which is kind of how I sometimes like it. Alan Tyne of Harrow. Find and 
by the laws convicted to hang on Tyburn trees, my face at which I'm much affrighted. Farewell, me friends, countrymen, and be native hills of Yarrow. Kind Providence shall test the soul of Alan Tyburn Farrow. Farewell, me friends, countrymen, and be native hills of Yarrow. Kind Providence shall test the soul. Where jacarandas grow, and I wrote this in Alistair's memory. Alistair told me once that he and Fatima wanted to go and visit somewhere where a revolution was happening or was about to happen. That's something that really stayed with me um, as a, 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 a kind of something to want to do one day. And um, so I started writing a song about that, but this song became about something else too. I wrote it as a sort of British y American um, folk song because so many of those were about people travelling across the sea to a better, uh, hopefully a better life. So I thought that was a good sort of language to use for something that's happening now and uh, what's happening now uh, and in this song, particularly in an Australian context, are that people are trying to make it across the sea to Australia, fleeing terrible things and uh, getting a really terrible welcome if welcome you can call it. So I wanted to write this for boat people, um, white Australians or incoming Australians, non-indigenous Australians have a wonderful saying which is we are all boat people and I love that sense of solidarity but I wish the, uh, I wish the government had that sense of solidarity too. Of course it's not just Australia but this song Where Jacarandas Grow um, is particularly about people making it to Australian shores. The jacaranda is a beautiful purple um, uh, plant that you find in the suburbs of Australian cities, originally African, I think. And uh, I was writing this song, Walking Along Through the Jacarandas. And um, it's also made a couple of ornithologists quite irate, this song. It's, um, it, the refrain is where magpies sweetly sing. And I know British magpies don't sweetly sing. But Australian magpies do, do, do. they have a, a beautiful... Well, ironically, these irate uh, ornithologists contacted Nancy via Twitter, which I thought was... <laughs> yeah, they did. Maybe smart. <laughs> so this is for Alistair, very specifically for Alistair. Called Wedge Acorns.
I also had a very diverse um, uh, compass, if you like, for his topic of writing, and he had a really esoteric interest in music generally. Like great writers, he, he listened to an immense amount of music, and he produced some stuff which, when I was a, a young musician in Australia, was, was just some of the most exciting songwriting going around. He lived in a suburb called Newtown, which was a, uh, a working class inner city suburb, which is now one of the, the richest uh, property markets in the world, bar none. It's sort of the kind of approaching that sort of selling your cupboard in London for two million job, and I'm not kidding. And uh, he wrote a song, you, you probably remember the young, upwardly mobile professional label, or Yuppie, as it was known. It seems almost like antiquity now, because Yuppies were defined by, you know, having a phone you could carry around with you, and having hot milk in their coffee. My God, these people. But um, he wrote this great song, and uh, it hasn't aged all that much, I don't think, called Yuppie Town. I do this especially for Fatima. to do Alistair's uncensored version by uh, Naomi's brave admission of her favourite thing to be said while in Glasgow. So that was the... She was broke, the, the, broke the bombs. That was the after 9pm version. Yeah, she, by yeah, Alice. she popped the call. This is a song that I wrote quite recently. I was up here um, for another concert as part of Celtic Connections a couple of weeks ago. And that was a, um, a project called The Elizabethan Session. And it was reflecting through new writing, new songs in the folk style, sort of reflecting um, the world during the reign of Elizabeth I. Um, not just Britain, but, but all over uh, her whole influence and other things. And I took that opportunity to write, as I always do, inspired by people like Alistair, kind of from the bottom up, so looking at the people 
right at the bottom of it. And uh, I had a great time on that project, and I definitely felt Alistair sort of, you know, influencing me, working through me. While I was on the project, I wrote this song. It's not part of the project. But while we were there writing music, um, the, the moon rose, and it was a, a full moon, and it was a red moon. In folk songs, when a red moon rises, it's never going to end well. But, I mean, it's never going to end well if you're in a folk song anyway. So <laughs> I wrote a song where it actually does end well because I felt inspired. This is a song about inspiration and the colour red. <laughs> it's called It Was Red. I saw a great cartoon the other day. It was a little girl sitting on her mum's knee and she was looking up and she says to her mum, Mum, what's, what's trickle down mean? And her mum says, well, about 1% of the population make an incredible amount of money. And the little girl says, yeah. Mum says, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>
singing for years um, an, an Alistair song, and I think this is a great condension, is that word? No, condensation? No, that's what you get on the window. A shrinking, a great telling of Australian history, and um, it's kind of the background to heaps of these songs that we sing. James is from a, a big singing family in Australia, and uh, when we had our, our children, I had this lovely wealth of really horrendous songs to sing them to sleep with. I, I wanted to introduce them to their father's convict ancestry through music. And so, but my worry was that when they went verbal, it would go totally inappropriate. So I had to cut out all the songs. I didn't want their first word to be flogging or something like that. It's childcare, the paperwork. Like that. So, um, so I kind of stopped, but I did sing. We sang Morton Bay and um, Jack Donahue and The Wild Colonial Boy, all these great songs. This is about those guys and girls uh, and much more. It's called The Sons of Liberty. Um, that, that was one of Alistair's guitars, uh, now in the, the, the tender care of John Hamill, one of the organisers of this concert. And when I walked in, John was sat over there playing this song on the guitar. And I wasn't going to do it until I heard him do it. And then I said, are you going to sing it? And he said he wasn't. So this is for John Hamill. <laughs> John Hamill, mate. This has my dad's favourite line in any song. Alistair was a man of words, as you know. <laughs> many, many words. Good words. And uh, when we recorded an album with this on it, um, I was asking the family what they thought we should call the album, and Dad said, well, there's a great line in one of Ali's songs, and you know, people often take a, a title from a line. I said, what's the title? And he said, I'm not sure it'll fit on the spine, but um, it's, with capital and clergy, the landlords did conspire to dispossess the poor and raise the nation's profits higher. <laughs> By Nancy Kerr and James Fagan, it's not going to work. Next one, definitely. <laughs> Come gather round me lucky lads And listen to me song I'll sing about the days when the colony was young How the men of property betrayed the labouring class With the transportation system I in town and came to pass. Historians may tell you how the convict maids and men were drenches of society and fit to be condemned. But let the truth be spoken, they were victims of the blight, forced by cruel lords to steal. What should have been the right? Improvement was the cash word It was bringing through the land And industry was gearing up to
by our children, uh, by Hamish, um, who came along in the very, very cold winter of uh, 2010. And uh, yeah, Hamish Alistair. Um, uh, and continuing the theme of inappropriate music to try and get children to sleep with, uh, to sleep with. I, I think that I didn't realise that lullabies were just meant to bore children to sleep. <laughs> so I was picking the wrong material for a long time, but I sorted it out. And after they did go verbal and I had to think about what I was singing, I sang, um, hush little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And um, sleep deprivation does funny things to you. And I got really incensed singing that 50 times a night. It's just like, why does the mama have to buy all the stuff? She's probably so on much, a lower so wage. A lower wage. She buys so many She things buys all the stuff. And then throws them away when And yeah, works. that's right, mama. If that breaks, mama will buy you a new thing. That's what's got us into the mess we're in. You should recycle, <laughs> reuse. I was totally overthinking it. <laughs> Three in the morning. So I wrote this song, which is based on all of those things. Um, we live in Sheffield in Yorkshire. Quite a lot of, uh, sort of folk music and folk. I like to think of it as the Glasgow of England. Yeah, we do. We like to flash it. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> the similarities are there. Not this one though. Um, uh, when our child was two, he became a Morris dancer. I just, as long as he's happy, you know, I'm not going to judge. But then, <laughs> but then, when he was three, he became a drummer. I don't know if that was better or worse. This is called My Little Drummer. Thank you. 
nothing maudlin about having an anniversary of somebody's death when it's Alistair Hewlett and I hope we do it every year forever and ever and ever so congratulations to the Alistair Hewlett Memorial Trust for the work that they do. We're delighted to be in the safe hands of Jim on sound. Would you give him a hand? The last day of the festival makes it's all over. everyone who's put on this gig um, and uh, yeah it's been a real pleasure thank you to you for coming and thank you to everyone who's played we've really enjoyed the music uh, I'm gonna leave you with a song that I wrote uh, it was one that was definitely I love that Alistair's singing in my ear here and that's kind of how it works actually <laughs> that's a pretty good representation of my mind this is a song called I am the fox we have heaps of songs in the tradition about uh, fox hunting and my favourite ones are the ones where halfway through the fox turns around and bites someone really. That's kind of like what this is. <laughs> so I thought I'd add to that, you know. So I am the fox and um, yeah, we'll leave you with this. Thank you so much. <laughs> We have copies of Sweet Visitor um, over there, which is the brand, brand new album uh, with heaps of these songs on. And there's also a few copies of our duo CD, which is also self-written, and it's called um, Twice Reflected Sun. So that's the red one and Sweet Visitor, uh, the darker one also. Thank you.
the snow lies bare, winter winds will hide our scent from heart and hair. Then fox and hound, bound no more by slavery, will bear their fangs and fight the hand of poverty. For I am the fox, and I'll tell you the truth. What the hounds do think of me, and I argue. When lavish scraps crawl along the from your knee, with spirit broken, we will run as me. Uh, everyone who's performed today, with the exception of lovely Tom, who has gone the poet. But could you please welcome back <laughs> Naomi and Paul and Davey for coming around. We're going to do um, a song of Alistair's, which I think is one of those ones that went instantly into the, um, the folk tradition, not just because it sounds great because it had a function, it had a story to tell. It's part of his um, song cycle, really, about um, the Whitnew Mines, which were the blue asbestos mines in Western Australia, um, which were connected with a, a horrendous scandal, a health scandal, um, which the, the bosses knew about. And uh, he wrote this piece, Blue Murder, and James is going to teach you the chorus, but it comes around heaps and it'd be great to all sing it together. It's a kind of a work shanty, protest shanty. Like that. Very brief, uplifting story, so you don't think, and they ended with a song about mesothelioma. <laughs> yes, but here's a very, very happy story. We used to live on a narrowboat 10 years, and one day a narrowboat came past us on the canal really slowly. And when they come past really slowly, they're either really old boats that are broken down, or they're very new boats with a three cylinder Bolander in perfect condition. And the slower they go, the this more they shove off. Horn, right. by the way. <laughs> So when, it's, when the engine's slower than your heartbeat, you know it's good. Anyway, it, coming past this speed, 72 foot boat, you can read it in great detail. It's highly polished. And I looked at the, the name of this boat in beautiful coach writing, and it said mesothelioma, right? I thought, that's a bit odd. <laughs> well, it is odd, let's face it. That is an odd name for a boat. Rosie Day, yeah, that's quite acceptable. Yeah. Kingfisher. Anyway, they got past. He, they, they, both people on the back looked quite well. I said, well, why have you named your boat mesothelioma? And he said, because. I worked for years and years and years with asbestos before it was all known about and uh, I am one of the few people who's, who I know who survived mesothelioma and you're looking at my 72 foot shining compensation check. <laughs> Every day they drive us harder, day in, day out, they're getting away with blue murder. Like you pick it up. Yeah. They said it's easy money in a full page, I don't like all right. right. Always nice and sunny, come, come on the land and pack your bag. Right. Off to West Australia, leave the old man town behind. Be a winner, not so failure, there's money to be made in the window mine. Day in, day out, every day they drive. Chorus, try it. Here we go. One, two, three. Day in, day out, every day they drive us harder. Day in, day out, they're getting away with Lumata. They took me to my quarters, a stinking bed in an haunting shed. I got my working orders with a lamp and a tin hat on my head. Day in, day out, every day they drive us 
workers hard at day in, day out, they're getting away with blue murder. My girl, she's a cook and cleaner, she works all day in the canteen hall. Six days since I've seen her, some don't have no girl at all. Day in, day out, every day they drive us hard at day in, day out, they're getting away with blue murder. She sweeps the fine blue dust up and she puts it into an opal pack. Never had a check up. If she did, she'd get the sack. Day in, day out, every day they drive us harder. Day in, day out, they're getting away with Lumberta. I fear my health is failing. I work all day in the killer dust. My kids play in the tailings, but the boss says work and work I must. Day in, day out, every day they drive Hard a day in, day out, they're getting away with Luma. A day in, day out, every day they drive us hard. A day in, day out, they're getting away with Luma. Thanks, everybody.